Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learned. So, you guys already know it's a show where we go through all the major talking points of the last game. And this was the first victory in ages that actually felt like there was a bit of conviction behind it, where we actually flexed our muscles over the entire 90 minutes. Everything went superbly well for us. Like, I think this is going to be the most optimistic Five Things We Learned that I think I've done in ages. But. Yes, it's good to come out of the game actually feeling happy with the performance. Now, I do know it is Middlesbrough. Like, they did just draw to bottom of the table, Rotherham, going into this game. And I do want to maintain that if you asked me this a month ago, when you told me that Chelsea wins 6-1 on aggregate against Middlesbrough, I wouldn't be too surprised. Wouldn't be too surprised. Because, like, even with this season, you expect us to dominate against a team that's in a division below us. So, I'm glad we did it. That's the main thing for me. I'm glad that we actually played to the standard that we are expected to play at. It's the first time in ages that I feel like we've done that. And that's still a step forward. That's a very positive step forward. And I'm glad that I just, just don't feel any real sense of negativity coming out from this game. Like, we'll we'll be real. Broya weren't great. Madueke weren't great. That's about it. Everybody else, I think, performed to their standard. And they did really well. They did really well. Um, it's good to see us through to the final. It's good to see us actually have the game dead by the end of the first half. How many times do we say that? We we never really say that with Chelsea. Usually, it's heart and mouth until full time. Especially with the way that we handle second halves. But it got to a point where I weren't even annoyed with the subs. I, I initially thought, hmm, well, why are we taking Mudrik off? I didn't really understand that. I thought we could give him the full 90. But then you think, Mudrik ain't great. It's been a full, we're 4 0 up on aggregate anyway. Who cares? Who actually cares? This is the beauty of actually dominating a game and taking your chances as well. We've also now officially outscored the Chelsea team from last season, which also proves my point that in spite of all of our problems in front of goal this season, we have upgraded on our attackers. All we've needed is an improvement in the setup. And the structure, and also from the players, they do need to be taking some of their chances as well. There's been some horrific misses this season. Both sides are correct. Management hasn't been great in periods. Our finishing hasn't been great in periods. But both of them combined really well today. The first point I want to say, because everyone always thinks I've just got some brazy Pochettino agenda. I actually think he handled today really well. I think the lineup didn't have any questions or complaints about it. I was just more surprised that we finally dropped Gallagher for a game. But... See the way it improved us. We looked a lot better in possession. We looked a lot better structurally. We weren't losing the ball nearly as much in the midfield. And then Gallagher comes on in the second half. And that engine is actually useful for us for keeping the ball high up in the pitch. Yeah, I'll be he did give away the ball for the Middlesbrough goal. But we were 6-0 up. So I don't really care too much about it. But he comes on and he bags two assists. Brilliant, brilliant build-up play for what's his name? The uh, Cole Palmer second goal. Conor Gallagher basically makes that by himself. The pass to Madweki as well. Brilliant. Great cameo from him. Um, that was going to be my second point as well. But I might as well segue into that. Gallagher off the bench is much better for us. And I want us to at least try Caicedo, Enzo and Palmer a little bit more. Because... Well, like everyone just talks about the Manchester United game and they're like, oh, this is what happens when you lose Gallagher. But we've spoken enough times about the games that Gallagher has played. He hasn't looked great and the team hasn't looked great as a result of it. With that free in midfield, you do have pressing. You can push Enzo a little bit higher up the field and also get some effectiveness out of it too because you're not going to have Gallagher lose the ball nearly as much as, uh, well, as much compared to Cole Palmer because Palmer's going to be a lot more secure on the ball. I want to see us try that midfield three a little bit more. And I know we're probably not going to see it against Villa because it is a bit of a crap turnover from Tuesday to Friday. I expect Gallagher to be back in the lineup and that's fine. But for the Liverpool game, I would like to see us try that midfield three, at least in that game. Or hell, even Wolves, because I'll be real, I do understand you playing Gallagher in this, in a sort of... A uh, game like Liverpool. That makes sense. I do think Gallagher would actually have a good impact on that match too. Wolves! Wolves, that's where I want to see that three next. I need Enzo Caicedo Palmer against Wolves at the very least. But yeah, Gallagher came on, um, did really well. I think it was the right time for him to be on the pitch as well. 
I want to see him off the bench a little bit more. That was my second point. But yeah, I want to go back to the first point as well and just say Poch handled everything brilliantly. The lineup was superb. Um, using Ben Chilwell in the um, pushing him a little bit centrally and allowing him to make runs in behind was very effective for us. We nearly got an extra goal from Chilwell because of that. I think that would have been the first goal. And he he basically sets up Sterling and Broya for the first goal because that's a brilliant, brilliant eye for a pass he had in that moment. Hopefully we see more of that from Chilwell. Hopefully we see more of that because at the start of the season, he was looking hideous. Last season, he was looking hideous. At least he's come back from the injury and you can say he's hit the ground running. Let's keep building on it. Let's keep these performances to this level. Let's keep utilising him in the right way. None of this left-wing BS. Let's at least... Well, we'll try him at a left-back. I want to see him tested a bit more defensively before I really believe the hype with Chilwell is returning and everything. But, yeah, I mean, he did well. He did well. I'm not going to take anything away from that performance. And I think Poch utilised him in the right manner too. So, big up to Pochettino. You actually did your job today. Fair play. But, yeah, I wanted to put that point in at the start. Just so people don't think I run an agenda on Poch and I won't give him credit when he does the right things. No, he did the right thing yesterday. He deserves praise for it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Like, I haven't changed my mind on Poch one bit, but you keep making the right decisions. We'll see where things go. We'll see where things go. Um, Third point, Sterling. Actually was very unselfish today. And look at look at the end result. Look at the end result. He was brilliant. Him and the Sassy. The pair of them linked up excellently. That was again meant to be two points. But we might as well just combine the two. Sterling was just brilliant. Him and, him and the Sassy both linked up for the second goal. And then obviously the Sassy's third goal. Which basically starts from the Sassy as well. But then he just underlaps and finds himself in a brilliant position. Sterling lays the ball off to him. And he takes it really well. I think De Sassi used to be a forward. I think he tweeted or put something out on Instagram talking about how he's how he's been in this position before or something like that. You'll let me know in the comment section because I can't remember it for the life of me right now. But yeah, De Sassi looked very comfortable in the final third. He looked a lot more comfortable pushing himself further forward than we've seen in the last few games of him at, him at right back. Now, I'm not going to come out and say, hey, maybe we should try him at right back a little bit more. No, that guy is a centre back. Let's stop playing players out of position and everything like that. We just had to do it in this sort of game because Gusto's injured. But great performance. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect him to look as comfortable as he did in that position. And yeah, pause also. Massive pause, by the way. But yeah, De Sassi was excellent. Sterling was excellent. Both of them, as uh, the whole team was excellent. It was only Broyer and Mudrick that didn't look good. But I'm glad that I'm coming out of a game thinking that for the first time in ages. I'm not thinking, oh, we got away with it. Or we just played a dead team and they didn't make us suffer. And they didn't make us pay for anything. God knows. Like, I'm, I'm just glad we've come out of this game and we've actually looked like the Chelsea of old. Even if it is against Middlesbrough. I'm just glad we've done that. Final point. That's also a perfect segue because we made the final. Finals are what we do. We've made the most finals this century. Now, it's time to break the Wembley curse. We don't have Kepa to ruin a Carabao Cup final like he did the last two times. We don't have Mason Mount to ruin the last two trips to Wembley. We don't have Kai Havertz, just being Havertz. We've lost a lot of that crap. We've got a much better squad. We can go there and give Liverpool a game. I, I just, I don't know what to expect though, because like, that game is draw FC. We've drawn like our last nine games. It could be going to penalties again. But if we're going to penalties, we don't have Mount and we don't have Kepa, so that's a positive. We have Petrovic, and Petrovic is meant to be a penalty genius anyway from his time in the MLS. And from what we saw against Newcastle too. Go and win. Who knows? It might not even be Liverpool. Fulham might have something for us. We really need a West London derby. Just for West London in general. So, we'll see what happens. But big up to everybody just locked in. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments section below. It's good to have an optimistic episode of 5 Things We Learned for the first time in ages. But, hey, we'll see how long that lasts. Because we know what this football club's about. Like, consistency. That, yeah, no. That's not really been our thing. But... Tell a lie, we have showed shades of that in the last couple games. I think that's now our sixth or seventh win at the bridge in a row. We're quietly starting to turn this place into a fortress. We've got six goals for the first time since April 2002. Let's go. Just build on it. Build on it. 
Big up everybody and up the Chels.